My name is Jan Geurt Geierland. So, um, Jan, we're extremely pleased you could join us today and um, extremely delighted you've put your time aside to, to um, talk about this remarkable woman, Etty Hillison. You. Yes. And um, tell me more, first of all, how did you come across the, the unpublished um, diary in its original form and, and how much compilation work was there involved in... in um, in Quite a lot, in fact. Uh, I came across the, the diaries uh, because a man who had interviewed me about my work, I was a publisher at the moment, he knew that I was interested in jewelry and, and, and war. And then he said suddenly, well, I have uh, a few diaries of a Jewish uh, woman um, in my house and I would like to you to see them and maybe you like them and maybe there is a possibility you could publish them. Well I got them and I got mm, one uh, pile of very difficult uh, to read uh, yellow papers with a with a pin uh, uh, around it and it, it was hardly possible to read it. But I was intrigued by it, and um, at a certain moment I picked it up and I read one, one page of it, and I suddenly realized this is very remarkable, what I see, what I read. And then I thought, well, okay... Uh, uh, Let's uh, see. I, I, I was very bu busy at the moment and, and I put it away again. But after a few weeks, I returned to that manuscript and I sat down and read more and more. And I was fascinated by it and couldn't put it down, in fact. And then it all started. I asked the man who gave me a few of the diary. There were more. Um, and um, so then he gave me one by one the whole package of diaries and and um, I said to him it's it's fantastic it's wonderful it's impressive uh, I would like to make a book out of it because it's way too long to publish this the whole manuscript in in one volume because it's an unknown woman of a certain time well a very a very specific time in our history of course but it's very personal very um, very spiritual very uh, much away from what we learn about the war the daily war so I have to think about it how to how to bring this book to the public. And um, finally, I started picking pieces together, uh, trying to make her life uh, visible through her diary, but in a way that a wider audience could grip it mm. immediately. Yes, and, and it strikes me that's interesting because it's still, in my view, probably, relatively speaking, considered a, a, an esoteric, esoteric text in the sense that, in fact, many Jews would know who Etty Hillisim is. Um, some of the rabbis I know have read the text, some haven't. But, you know, non-Jewish people, she isn't necessarily a household name as Anne Frank is. And I don't know if that's, you know, well, a bad thing. But the thing is, yeah. uh, she's been... How many languages have you translated? Well, there are uh, maybe 18 languages really? so far. Gosh. And so it's... Mm. I just uh, uh, sold the Chinese rights. And, and I'm trying desperately to to get the Russians to mm. have this book. Because Etty Hillesim, her mother was a Russian woman. She was ha half Russian, uh, Russian, so to say. And um, she wanted to be a, a bridge between Russia and Europe. Mm. 
Yes. And she says somewhere. She makes references to traveling through Russia into si Siberia, I remember. She yes. studied yeah. Russian. Mm. She could read it. She, she reads yes. Dostoevsky all the time and so on. So she knew her classics. Um, yes. But I think that's wonderful, the, f the fact you found um, th these... Um, scribbles on paper which were they're so you know her language is so beautiful and and yes. you, you translated really at least <laughs> a couple of times in order to, to interpret her handwriting first of all it's right to, because be, before you <laughs> c can read her handwriting that mm. was quite uh, a task but yes. and you did that but you're all yourself yes <laughs> i did that myself uh, um, but i had a, a small team of people who worked it out mm -hmm. at the end because I couldn't do it all, all alone. And have you been allowed to keep those original copies yourself? Or no, no, no. I had you? them for years. Mm -hmm. Well, about three years, I had them in my desk, uh, uh, lying around, and mm -hmm. because I was working with them. Now they are at the his Museum. Jewish Historical Museum, the originals, mm -hmm. and they are heavily. Um, well, uh, guarded, protected, yes, protected, <laughs> and uh, but I I used to to go around with them, and I was very familiar with them. It was part of my life, so to say. Mm. We'll move on to slightly, perhaps more the the, the spiritual aspects of the writings, because uh, as I say, when I first came across the diary, um, it did transform my life. Completely, uh, both on personal levels and spiritual levels. As I say, I read Anne Dank's di and Frank's diary at the same yeah. time. And although both were incredibly sophisticated women, uh, um, Etty Hillison being slightly older, she has other uh, matters of romance and hormones to, to yes. um, write about and to have twice as old as <laughs> Absolutely. And her spirituality her her um spiritual qualities yes. um i'm sure you've already said in fact would have come across to you straight away through her writing. yes and and that was where at first i was afraid of that the people uh, would be a bit anxious or uh, um, um well a bit afraid of that kind of writing but it turned out that Ex that a lot of people, Jewish and non-Jewish, Christian and not Christian, uh, all sort of people could recognize her writing. And that is uh, a, a sort of miracle. Uh, first of all, she is writing as an artist, uh, almost. You, you could say she is a writer, and that is what she wanted to be mm. at the first place, in the first place. Um, which is very important to make it uh, readable, to make it that so that the people can can take it in. the 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 way she writes is so beautiful, but then the content as well is is beautiful. She, but her voice is. Uh, uh, universal so to say that's what i mean when i say jews and non-jews can read it there's not a particular uh, orthodoxy or whatever she has a belief in a god within her uh, she finds the words for her belief and her faith and um, she does that in such a sincere way that everybody can can understand what she means and specifically in a time in the hard times where she was living in uh, it makes it all the more uh, strong what she did and well writing diaries is one thing but being in a camp like she was in Westerbork later on when she was there uh, she wrote letters and she wrote also in her diary but she wrote letters with a quality you can't imagine she wrote about the way people were taken into the the trains 
uh, to Auschwitz. They didn't know it. they went to Auschwitz, but uh, in fact that was the case. But um, she writes like someone who is so involved and at the same moment so detached and with an incredible uh, strength and 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 lovely way of finding words for the most difficult things there were and i i, I absolutely and in fact i'm sure that detachment you speak of um it can be a sign of a true intellectual which she certainly was but to be a true intellectual and um, yet to have such compassion such um, givingness in her personality um, I'm sure she wouldn't necessarily know we were speaking of her altruistic qualities you know 70 years on no. um, we could speak more about that or I could ask also a question the the spiritual transformation the spiritual tran transition she makes throughout those years she writes the diary um, would you say she realized what her fate would be even on a subconscious level and to still accept what was to happen and to still make that spiritual I'm transition, sure she was aware of the fact that the Germans and and the Nazis were uh, determined to uh, to how do you say that, exterminate mm. the people, uh, the Jewish people. She knew that uh, working in the East meant probably devastation and uh, death. Um, there were, at the same time she was writing her diaries, there were already warnings through the BBC and uh, that the Jews uh, going to the East would die there. How precisely was not uh, 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 known. She mentions one figure, doesn't she? I think yes. it's a BB ironically enough, a BBC World Service broadcast 1942. That's true. Springtime, I can't. Yeah, uh, April ish. Uh, and she yeah. mentions, I think it was at 70. Thousands or seven hundred thousand, one of the two, yeah. were perishing in these death yes, camps. But yes. you know, no yeah. one had any idea in what ways and what torture no, was involved. You know, you're right. Discussing. The the, the uh, how the machinery was working was not known, mm. of course. But there were quite a lot of rumors that the the Jews would be perished mm. there. And um, uh, but nevertheless, she was so. How she was aware of the fact that she wouldn't survive going to the East, I'm sure. There are several places in her diary that she talks about it. On the other hand, there was that uh, belief that there was a good side in humanity. There were still humane... Uh, well, there were still people who Goodness who are and good. Humanity. <laughs> yes, and and she th she was searching where the goodness of the people w was, and 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 she she kept doing that, even in the darkest. Absolutely, moments. up until the very end, she writes, doesn't she? Um, I I still believe in God, and I'm not embarrassed to say so, and I. Um, You're right. And absolutely, she she also believed in a higher psychological self to to make that spiritual transition yeah. was, was only possible to to think in these means. Yeah. I um, wonder though, because of course, not that I know very much about the exact history, um, but um, Amsterdam was one of the last countries to be affected by the war. You know, it, it spread right through Poland, and then you know, and then really, so yeah. in many ways. People felt relatively safe, even the Jewish community. Until yes, later. yes, and, um, up till a certain moment. Point, yes. uh, but by then it was too late. They wouldn't have and been then able to leave the country. It was too late. Think, yes, yeah. uh, and, and more devastating for the Dutch people mm. is that more than 100,000 Jews were sent away to the East, which is, the, which is an, uh, 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 far more than percentage wise 
than in other countries. So that is a, a, a black uh, a black page in our history. Mm. The letting the, the 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 well the Germans were very clever in doing it and and uh, th there were so many people who were not aware of the danger and and they stayed and stayed and thought maybe it, the war will go will will end soon that hope always that hope that mm. the war would end soon is 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 mm. is, uh, is also mm. you can read that and i'm sure it it would have made so little sense to someone like Etty or many of the Jewish people, the fact that um, the Jews were a contribution to society overall. Many were doctors or accountants oh, yeah. and what have you. So why on earth would there be this ethnic cleansing against this community? You know, it would have... Nothing really still makes very much sense, to be honest. You can study no. the history and still, you no, know, you can't you, understand No, the, you don't understand. In the Nazis' minds and no, Hitler's no. mindset. But, um, Absolutely not. Uh, yes. But the, yes. And... Um, it had she had a few opportunities to have left Amsterdam, I know Speer um, and a few of her friends did leave the country and then come back again. So she did have the opportunity. In fact, I think she makes a, a journey to, to Switzerland or one of them. No, those. she didn't. No, not during the war. She no. was the, all the time there. Was she? But she was in the camp in Vestabor, oh, yes. which was a concentration camp. Mm. Uh, and she went in and out that camp because she had a, a sort of Yes. Uh, but she could have run and she could have hide mm -hmm. if she wanted. There were friends who wanted to, to do that, to help her. There were place, places mm -hmm. she could go to. One of the and, but things. she didn't do it. Mm -hmm. She said, I want to be there. I belong there. Mm -hmm. I don't want to leave my family. Yes. And do you believe it was also that altruistic sense that she felt she wanted to help her family and friends and stay with them, support them, you know, keep yes, them... Yes, that, uh, that was strength. deeply her, uh, uh, her sense of... Uh, well, that, that, that was, in fact, her solidarity mm. was, I think, one of the main points in her life. She chooses, I think, even to go to the holding camps to Westerbork at times. She didn't need, yes. needn't in order to, she, to, to she ha help her friends. She has chosen yes, to do yeah. it. Which is unusual. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's very rare. Very I, I don't think um, there Many are... No, 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 no. I, I agree. Absolutely. Um, it's also wonderful and, and interesting to note that at least two of the major religions, being Judaism and ca the Catholic Church, have wanted to claim Etty Hillison for themselves, as it were. <laughs> yes. What do you say to that? Uh, well, I, I uh, say that claiming is, is not a good thing to do. She is, and, and she would have uh, said no to, to those claims, I think. She didn't feel specifically uh, she she didn't have a Jewish faith or a Christian faith, although there are from both religions uh, uh, you can find um, well you can find many references yes many references of course and um, she studied the New Testament testament as, as yes, well and understood end, it and it was and, very and, meaningful to her, but you could say she was. Uh, even more into Rilke, the, yes, the, Rilke, the German the, the romantic, poet, absolutely. and um, who was not Christian or no. Jewish at all. No. Uh, so she had many sides, and but but well, claiming is not a good no. thing. And um, no, she had her own uh, yeah. philosophy. Her, yes. yes, her own uh, philosopher uh, um, philosophy, but, uh, and there are certain Jewish. Uh, uh, communities who don't want to deal with her at That's all. That's very interesting. Yeah. Mm. Also here in Holland, they mm. they are not interested in her. I suppose if she wasn't necessarily practicing Jew, no. you know, they, the Orthodox that's the, Church that's probably the point. wouldn't necessarily. Know. Yeah. How interesting. There was even yeah. an, a, a letter of a, a known Jewish woman mm. writer here in Holland who wrote a letter to the New York Times when the book was out in America saying, well, this is not a, an interesting Jewish personality. Uh, don't you...